Hello, and welcome to our weekly Bible study here at Harbor Light Baptist Church. Uh, just a reminder, we have small groups meeting in Holland and Grand Haven each Wednesday and uh, looking to start more if you'd uh, be interested in hosting one or being a part of one at a different time or different date. Uh, tonight, uh, we are starting a new series and uh, going to be coordinating that with our Sunday morning time, taking a little bit of a break from the book of Mark. We'll be back to it uh, before too long, but we're going to be looking at a series called Dinner with Jesus and examining uh, the meals that Jesus had with others in the scriptures, those that are recorded, and there's quite a few of them, and um, looking at what he teaches us through that and why he did what he did. So I uh, hope you'll uh, follow along with us and get involved, and I think it'll be a blessing and a challenge to you, and it'll open up an opportunity for you to really minister to others in a remarkable way. Uh, tonight, we're really just kind of prepping ourselves to dive into this study of uh, seeking to pique some interest on looking at the meals that Jesus had with others and uh, leading in toward that first main message there on Sunday. I would love to invite you to come on out to church Sunday morning here at Harbor Light for that 10.30 a.m. service as we look at um, the Son of Man um, eating and drinking with others. So that's our text for tonight. If uh, you want to read that with me here in our first lesson, uh, Luke 7, 34 and 35, uh, not looking at a particular meal, but just this concept of Jesus eating and drinking. It says there in Luke 7, 34 and 35, the Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and ye say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but look at this, but wisdom is justified of all her children. Uh, why did Jesus identify himself in such a way? Why does he think it's so important to eat and drink with others? Why is the subject of meals and dinners such an important thing to the Lord Jesus Christ? So as we look at this passage here in Luke chapter 7, we're confronted with the, the thought, the question, how did Jesus use his time? Uh, he uses this phrase in Luke 7, uh, the Son of Man came. What did he come to do? In what manner did he come? And uh, that's a, a statement that he makes three times. We'll look at the other two uh, on Sunday morning. But things like, he came to seek and to save the lost, right? That might be something you think of. He came to teach, uh, certainly. But here in Luke 7, Jesus says the Son of Man came eating and drinking. One of the very important methods that Jesus used during his very short earthly ministry uh, was to eat and drink with others. I, I think about that. I'm 37 years old. Uh, Jesus lived to be about 33 or so years old um, and only ministered publicly for three or so years. And a large part of that ministry, a large part of his short life here on earth was used eating and drinking with others. Uh, that's compelling to think that Jesus used his precious short time to have dinner with other people. And why did he do that? That's a question I want to explore. I want to be challenged, and I want you to be challenged with as well. Uh, as we read through the Gospels, and especially Luke's Gospel, Luke seems to focus on this greatly. You see Jesus is constantly eating meals with others. Luke records at least nine separate instances where Jesus ate with others. I think you can probably, as you look at the other Gospels, get to around 14 or so um, different meals that are recorded. And that's, that's, you know, Jesus here implies in Luke 7, that's not everything that's recorded uh, of him eating and drinking with others, right? There's uh, not everything was written down, not everything was remarked upon. Um, that's a lot, right? <laughs> the Gospels aren't very long. And when the Lord inspired those uh, apostles and uh, others who wrote the Gospels, they dedicated some of their very short writing time to talking about the meals Jesus ate with others. So uh, very, very compelling. Some of these meals include things like wedding feasts, uh, parties that people threw, private meals in homes, um, meals with unbelievers, meals with very close disciples. It included large groups, small groups, uh, meals where people were friendly, some meals where some of the guests were hostile towards him, uh, meals where strange things happened, like someone coming in and washing his feet uh, with, his, with her tears, anointing him. Uh, so wide range of things for us to look at and explore in the weeks ahead. I'm excited for it. Uh, as, again, we think about Jesus 
using his time, he spent much of his time at these dinners. And, and what did he do? Did he spend all of that time lecturing people? Well, certainly he talked about sin and salvation, and uh, he confronted people at times. Uh, but Jesus says in Luke 7, he participated in these dinners. He ate and drank with others. He was um, a part of that meal, right? He, he was having conversation with other people. He spent quality time with people. He was friendly and loving, and people were attracted to him, so much so that one of the insults that people used, one of the ways they criticized Jesus and, and felt it was credible, was that they said that he was a friend of publicans and sinners because he ate meals with them. And so the Son of God used his time to eat with others. Well, why did he do that, right? Why? Why is that part of his method, right? Uh, there must be something compelling about eating together because Jesus was on mission while he was here on this earth. He, di he didn't come to vacation. He didn't come to play around. He was on mission. In fact, uh, we can see that in the book of Mark uh, where Jesus sets out uh, to preach the kingdom of God. Now, after that, John was put into prison. Jesus came into Galilee. Why? Right? Why? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. Does that sound like someone who is playing around, who's going to waste his time? Certainly not, but part of what he deemed as important was to minister to others and to spend time with them, eating and drinking with them. And so God, the God of the universe, who's on mission to proclaim his kingdom, decided that eating with others was not a waste of time. Hospitality and friendship with sinners was a vital part of the incarnate ministry of Jesus, and I want us to delve into why that is and was, right? Now, my question then for you is, are you willing then to use your hospitality? Would you follow Jesus in this area? Uh, would you use your hospitality for God's kingdom? I think we probably recognize conceptually that the Lord wants us to use all of our resources for him. We have verses like this, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. We recognize that, that, you know, we're supposed to use all that we have for God's glory. Uh, we even see that in our passage in Luke 7, wisdom's justified of all her children. Those who follow Jesus were supposed to walk in his footsteps, and his methods were justified in their lives, right? It was proven uh, as they followed him that uh, he was who he says he is, right? Uh, and so we have an important part of using all that we have and, and dedicating everything to following him. But here we see in this passage, Luke 7 and, and throughout the Gospels, that hospitality is an important part of that. And that's not just something we, we, we assume because Jesus um, used hospitality himself. It's actually something specifically instructed in Scripture. Um, in places like 1 Timothy 3 and verse 2, right? A bishop, an overseer, a pastor. What are the important qualities? Well, one of them is that he's given to hospitality, right? Like he's supposed to be the husband of one wife. He's supposed to be sober, but he's also supposed to be given to hospitality. And so we recognize things like a pastor ought to be able to teach, but he also ought to be given to hospitality. That's an important part of those who are going to lead us as we follow Christ. But not just pastors. I mean, Paul in Romans 12, when going through the marks of a Christian, he says that they, are, they ought to be given to hospitality. And Peter, when he talks about having fervent charity among yourselves, right? Loving one another fervently. What does he highlight? Hospitality, right? This is an important part of being someone who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. Why is that? And how can we do it, right? And so, are you one of Jesus' followers? If you are, will you follow him in this area of hospitality? Will you learn from him? And will you exercise uh, the use of meals and dinners and eating and drinking the way that Jesus did? Well, quite a challenge. I'm looking forward to some discussion. Post some questions in the comments for you or in the description. And uh, please join us on Sunday as we look at dinners with Jesus. Well, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.